Hi, everyone. I'm Christine Tully. I'm a senior writing coach with Defend and Publish, and welcome to episode 16, Use a Writing Session to Plan. At the time I'm recording this episode, it is April, and I don't know about the rest of you academics, but April for me tends to get a little bit crazy. I think it's partly because we know the end of the semester is approaching and there's all these deadlines, there's a lot going on. Certainly during this year in particular, we're in the spring of 2021, um, you know, things have just been a little bit crazy and all over the place. So depending on where you are in the country, you might still be doing um, some remote learning. You might be doing things where you're still teaching everyone online. You might be homeschooling your children. So there's just a lot happening. And so one of the things that I try to do when I notice that I'm getting overwhelmed with all of my responsibilities and my deadlines is just to admit I've got to use one of my writing sessions for a planning session. And I, you know, I give myself permission to do it. And it actually is a really great way to just reset what's happening. So I wanted to give you some strategies about how might you might go about doing the same thing if you find yourself overwhelmed or just you just feel like you're missing things and you're you're not quite getting all your obligations done. So let's talk about how that might work. Um, one of the things I wanted to say to start was a quick note about my planning systems, because I think some of us do a total digital planning system, others of us use paper. I use a mix of both. So I even have, uh, for those of you on a podcast and you're audio listening, you're not going to be able to see this, but on video, I'm holding up the planner, the paper planner that I'm using right now. Um, this is a start today planner by Rachel Hollis. Um, they have them at Target and my friend and colleague Megan Adams introduced me to it. So shout out to Megan because this was really a great planning tool. Um, I use that as my paper planner to track what I'm doing every day. Um, it does have things like times I'm doing appointments or I'm meeting my classes, but it also has spots in there for goal setting. And I'm a big fan of goal setting planners in general. So in the show notes today, I'm actually going to link to an article that talks about the best productivity planners. Um, no one, including Rachel Hollis, is not supporting our, our episode at Defendant uh, Publish today. But this article is really great because it, it's great for um, every, you know, depending on what you like in a paper planner, there's all kinds of tools out there. And I just was fascinated by this article because what I'm interested in is the link between planning and writing, um, not just planning out when you're going to write, but the actual writing of the planning, because that is part of why you're do or part of a writing session anyway. So we're using our, our writing session in this manner to do some planning, but as you're doing it, you're actually doing some writing. Um, I find when I do this type of planning, I'm taking notes about projects and reminding myself, oh, you know, you need to get that source. That's not just a note to remind me to get the source, but it's also a note to myself as to why I need that source. It might be to provide uh, a rationale on my methodology, or it might be an example of something that I'm arguing at work. So, you know, planning and writing to me, I, they're very linked um, and they overlap with each other a lot. So if you feel any guilt about using a writing session for planning, don't, because you're definitely going to do some writing as part of it. Okay, so I mentioned the first, um, the paper planner as my go-to. I use it every day. I write in it in the morning um, and I'll put a picture in the show notes so you can actually see what my pages look like um, written out so you can see how writing and planning go together for me. The second thing I use is I just use Microsoft Outlook. That's what we use at my university. Uh, I do color code, you know, my meetings, my classes, things like that. But beyond that, I don't get very advanced with it. I don't know how to set reminders in it or anything like that. Um, I know I get some for meetings, but um, my paper planner is really my first line of action. And then I do have um, deadlines and things also loaded into my electronic calendar. Okay, so you may be using it all different ways. Um, you might have something set up on your phone or however you're doing it. And any way that you're going to use your planning system will work with what I'm gonna recommend. So um, one of the things that I like to do first to start is just to get in my email and just do a little bit of digging. Where is the stuff that I promised somebody I was going to do? So for example, here's a perfect <laughs> perfect um, thing that went into my calendar today, because I'm actually doing a planning session, which gave me the inspiration for this episode. 
um, one of the things that I found was, oh, I was supposed to decide on teaching assistant orientation lunches. I was supposed to do that on Monday. I didn't do it on Monday. It's Saturday when I'm recording this. I'm a little bit behind, but it's stuff like that. So I went at, you know, I made sure that I added that to my list of things I needed to do. I know I still need to register some graduate students for classes. I know I need to present at a workshop next week. So there's many things on there I know are coming up, but all those deadlines are floating around in my head and I don't really have them recorded anywhere um, specific. So even though I do use my paper planner, like all folks, I get behind. So somebody asks me if I can do something, I don't always write it in my planner. I'm not the best at doing that. And so that's why just having one of these planning days is really great for just clearing out that mental clutter about all kinds of projects, not just writing projects. So what I do is I find all that stuff. The other thing I do is I look around for deadlines that I know are coming up. Um, they might already be in my planner or in my calendar, but I just refresh my memory about them. So for example, I knew that there was something really important on April 23rd that I needed to take care of, but I couldn't remember what it was and I didn't remember who it was for. So just doing some of that mental work of figuring out what it is you're supposed to be doing is definitely worth it. And as I discover these things, so for example, as I combed through my email for the last week, I only worried about looking back a week. I wrote down all those things in my planner. I also put any relevant deadlines on my calendar that I had not missed that I, you know were coming up. So I put those on there. Um, another thing that I think is really important to pay attention to is let's say you have some deadlines and I did take notes for you guys today. They're on my, if you hear paper rattling, that's me looking at my notes. But some of the other things I found in there were deadlines for grants or for fellowships or things like that. So um, many of us have to apply for different things like summer funding or you know whatever it is we're doing. So definitely dig around to find those sorts of things. Don't just look at scholarly things, look at anything that might be on the table for you. And then the next thing that I do, once I get in everything that's sort of the backlog, as I call it, is then I look forward. And here is a good example of how to do that. Um, generally, once you get into a subfield, you are probably going to the same two or three conferences every year, maybe more, you know, depending on your, your discipline. Um, but at least for me, I'm in the area of writing studies, like many of our coaches in Defend and Publish. So actually, just a side note about that. It's um, a great organization just because we are all writing teachers. We have degrees in writing studies, and this is what we do. And so one of the conferences that, let's say, the coaches at Defend and Publish might end up doing is going to um, a college conference or a conference for college composition and communication. I never could say all those, those Cs. We call it the Cs. But um, it, is, it is a conference that happens in the spring. And generally, the call for the next year's conference comes out in April, mid-April um, sometime. And it, usually, the deadline is around the middle of May. And so that's something I know happens every year. I know that deadline is coming up every year. And so one of the things I just did today in my planning session was to just add that on my calendar as a yearly reminder. So I just put it on there just randomly on the date of April 18th. I put a little note saying, check, you know, check for the C's, call for papers. And I put it on as a repeating thing every year. So I can dump that out of my brain. I don't have to remember to watch for that. Um, that might be the same for you for a grant that you like to apply for every year, um, especially if it's something internal at your university or for graduate students, it might be something for fellowship funding or something like that. So I put those in there. The other thing I did is I just went ahead and looked at any major conference or any major thing I might be interested in doing between now and the end of the year and just looked at all the deadlines. When is that conference that I'm going to go to, but I'm not presenting at? When is that workshop? And I put all of those deadlines on my calendar. That doesn't mean I'm, I'm actually going to do every single one of those. I might not, but I just wanted to make sure that I had those in my calendar and I had the option to do them. And I didn't, I didn't let a deadline go by and I was like, oh, I really wanted to do that, but I didn't do it. Um, another thing that I ended up doing, and this is also really useful with the electronic calendar specifically, is I actually then looked at my calendar just in the month view. So I was using Outlook, but I'm sure in any calendar you can look at it by the month. 
And I just very quickly looked to see when all those deadlines were. And when I could, I put in a reminder two weeks before that deadline. So if there was a call for papers, you know, I know it's due May 15th, I put a reminder on May 1st. Make sure that you really did take care of that. You really did turn in that call for papers. Um, so that, you know, all of those things on there just gets rid of a whole lot of mental baggage. Um, you know, I had some other things on there, like make sure I contact my brand new graduate students about housing options and things like that, that I only do once a year, but I could put on then as a repeating task. So once all of that's in there, you might be wondering, like, this is really great organizational stuff, but how does this actually help me with my writing project? So I want to close with just a couple of ways how this has directly helped me. Um, one of the things that had helped me is that I got, when I looked at my calendar for April, I looked at it at the month view and I got a really good look at how busy April is in the last couple of weeks, as it might be for you as well. It's a lot of end of end of year sem or end of semester stuff, lots of extra meetings and things I don't normally have. So one of the things I did is I got real realistic with myself about when could I get some writing done. And then I did schedule in, um, right now I have six writing sessions. I'm really trying to get eight scheduled in there in the last couple of weeks of this month, but I got six in of blocks of two to three hours to get some work done. They're not great. They're not at my ideal times when I like to write, but you know what, I found some spots for them. So once you get all that other planning done, please do some planning to get your own writing in there somewhere. Um, the other thing that I did is in those individual writing sessions. So when I put them on my calendar, both in my paper planner, which I'm holding up again, and in the electronic calendar, the other thing I did is I actually took a minute to make a couple notes about what exactly I want to do in that writing session. I don't do this all the time with writing, but because I know that April is kind of frazzled, I'm kind of frazzled, I might want to get some work done in that session and know exactly what I'm doing. I made notes to myself about what to do. So here, for example, is what I'm going to do. Um, I have these six writing sessions scheduled and I'm working on an article with some PhD alum from their rhetoric and writing program about um, how they're using an advice guide. So one of the things that I have is I have transcripts of interviews with them. And then I also have a bunch of notes. I took on some scholarly articles about advice guides and graduate students. So I've got these two piles of information. I haven't done anything with this draft, but I decided I'll use three of my sessions in the one week to focus on just dealing with the transcripts and seeing what those transcripts have in common. So doing some very, very initial loose coding for lack of a better word. Um, that's not gonna be my methodology per se, but just so I could look and see what I even have. I haven't even read all the information that's in there in a long time. Um, the other part that I'm going to do in those other sessions is the notes that I took from my research, because I had mentioned this in a previous podcast about doing a little pleasure reading. So if you want to go back in our podcast link, you can see that episode. But I talk about how I take notes on articles when I read them that I actually then transfer into my writing. So I have a whole bunch of articles with a lot of little notes here and there that were taken about those articles that I'm going to then put in my writing. And so that's the other thing that I'm going to do during my session. So hopefully this gives you some ideas about how you might use a planning session for writing um, or yes, planning session for writing, I should say a writing session for planning. <laughs> I thought about that a different way. Um, but a writing session for planning is, is definitely a good use of time. You don't want to use one all the time. Um, I do this, I would say maybe three or four times a year just to get a grip on what's happening. So I'm hoping that that will be very helpful to you. And then it, because it is April, I did want to point out one thing that might be useful to anyone with a deadline, but particularly our PhD students that might be scheduling dissertation defenses. Um, if you are looking for a place that you want to practice your dissertation defense, um, feel free to reach out to Defend and Publish for coaching in that manner. Um, another way that we're a little bit different, if this is something that you're interested in doing, is that if you have a, a dissertation defense and you just want to run through it and practice it with faculty that will listen, will take notes, will give you feedback, um, particularly because many of these defenses are done over Zoom, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, you certainly can reach out to us by just emailing Beth at Defend and Publish if you want to set up um, 
if you want to set up a, a consultation or something like that to make sure that you get some help. Um, but it is something we do and you can just use just an hour or two to do it. So it, I think it's totally worth it. You can also click that schedule an initial consultation button on our website. It's on the very first page of defendandpublish.com. So lots of ways to reach out to us and happy writing this week.